this is Samantha here from RecipeList.com and the voice behind the popular kitchen gadgets podcast, Magic with Gadgets. Today I wanted to show you just how easy it is to cook a slow cooker pork leg joint with vegetables and including making a gravy in your crock pot. Well, before we dive into this recipe, I just wanted to suggest that you head over to RecipeThis.com. We've got more than 1,200 kitchen gadget recipes, including recipes for the air fryer, instant pot, slow cooker, soup maker, bread maker, microwave, ninja foodie, and many others. We also have a free weekly newsletter, which you can find on the homepage of RecipeThis.com, or you can find it on RecipeThis.com forward slash newsletter. And there you can get our best kitchen gadget recipes sent to your inbox every Friday morning. Now on with this slow cooker pork leg joint. I did this as an idea because what I love to do is I like to, I like to make a gravy out of the vegetables. So I'll cook the pork and I'll cook the vegetables and I'll cook some apple and then I'll blend some of it as well as the pork juices to create a lovely pork gravy. And it's just fantastic for pairing together. And then you can take out the remaining vegetables out of the slow cooker as well. And then you've got meat, veg and gravy together. So I'm sure you're wondering what ingredients we're talking about here because that might sound complicated to you, but the ingredients are really simple and straightforward. And it's actually a very easy slow cooker recipe to do. So on with the ingredients. Boneless pork leg joint. And then for vegetables, sweet, carrots, parsnip, some potatoes, a couple of apples. Then to make it really, really nice, we add some butter or some margarine to the vegetables as they cook. So I'll be using this one, which is my favorite. And that's, I can't believe it's not butter, but it's the light version. So it's very low calorie and a good alternative to butter if you don't want to use butter. And then for seasonings, we're using salt and pepper and we're using a bouquet garni, but you can use mixed herbs or you can use some Italian seasoning or something similar or just mix up some, uh, some thyme with some oregano. And then we're using some rosemary as well. And then for the stock that's going in the slow cooker, it's the cheats method and that is the equivalent of 500ml of apple juice. So that's the equivalent of two full mugs of apple juice that I've poured out there for you. And that's all the ingredients you actually need. And then beyond this, we're obviously using our crock pot, but we're also using our soup maker because it has a fantastic blender on it. And then it can blend the ingredients to make the yummy pork gravy, which we'll run through in full detail once the pork is cooked. So now it's time to get started. So I recommend you start by turning on your slow cooker. You want it on high. We've just got this uh, new slow cooker. It was a really cheap crock pot one and it doesn't actually have a time setting on it. I didn't realize this until I got it home. And now uh, I remember what time I put something on at, but I also find with the slow cooker that if you go by the smell of the slow cooker, you can often tell when your food's done anyway. And generally I find that when I cook um, a slow cooker dinner, um, because crock pots are quite powerful, uh, three hours on high or six and a half hours on low is fine. And then for the veg, you can mix and match, but try and keep it to root vegetables because root vegetables take longer to cook in the slow cooker and they make a fantastic creamy base for a gravy. So, you know, avoid things like uh, broccoli and cauliflower. You can also use things like leeks and celery as well if you prefer those. It's just totally about personal choice. And you can use as many veg or as few as you like. I mean, I only really use uh, potatoes in it because I know that they're fantastic for thickening up a gravy. But it's totally up to you as to what you use. And you can just start by just peeling up all your veg and everything so that you're ready to go. And then once you've peeled your vegetables, it's time to get them chopped and get them loaded into your slow cooker. You can also leave a few of the potatoes a bit bigger, uh, like this, in case you want to serve them on the dinner plate when you're done. So 
Same again with the parsnips. I find a swede is so much easier just to slice up like this. And then once you've got it all in, you can do the same again with your apples. But with your apples, they're fine to keep the skin on, but obviously lose any stickers that are attached. You can peel them as well if you want. It just depends how much time you've got and whether or not it bothers you having the apple skin. So that's one apple done. These stickers aren't too bad today. Sometimes they really, really stick to the apples and it feels like it takes a lifetime to get them off. And this is also lovely for when apples are in season. And then there you go. That's all the veggies and the apples and the potatoes done. Let's give them a good shake so that they're nicely mixed. And as you can see, you've got a fantastic layer there of your different vegetables. And something else I want to mention, and that is, this is all the peelings that we've got here. This is quite a lot. So what I recommend you do is if you've got an instant pot or another electric pressure cooker like the Ninja Foodie, is you collect all these up and you use them towards a vegetable stock because vegetable stocks are absolutely fantastic for using in the slow cooker. And I'll often freeze a stock cube and then I can grab it from the freezer as I need it and then just throw it into the slow cooker when it's still frozen. And then it cooks as your food cooks in the slow cooker and that's just brilliant. And then next, you want to be adding in your margarine one. Well, it's a new one, so you know when you're trying to find the end. Oh, there we go. And then you can add as much as you want. That's the kind of portion I use. And then just load it in there. And then next, add in your seasonings. So a good amount of salt, a good amount of pepper, Rosemary is absolutely delicious with pork. And then finally, um, I'm using some bouquet garnish. If you've not had bouquet garnish before, it's just a French version of mixed herbs. And it's absolutely delicious in casseroles and one pot dishes like this. And then once you've done all that, it's time to mix again. And then what you can do is you can also separate the margarine so you've got a good layer of it on the top. And then I'm just gonna clean my chopping board and then we can load the pork in. All right, so I've cleared it up. I've put all my uh, scraps to one side to make another batch of Instant Pot vegetable stock. And if you head over to recipethis.com, you can find the veggie stock recipe there. Or we've also done a video for it as well for you. So once you've sorted that out, I recommend adding in the apple juice next. It's just giving the vegetables something to cook in. And it's also adding flavour for when you're making that gravy. So... When, when you look at it for 500 ml, which is the equivalent of just over two cups, what you're looking for is where your water line is. So if you look, the majority of the vegetables are actually in the water there, or in the apple juice, as you would say. And I don't recommend using actual water as stock in the slow cooker, because it just makes your food bland. Now, for this pork leg joint, let me have a look at it first. It is uh, 1.3 kilos, so it's a nice good size. I will uh, discard the crackling once it's done because I'm really not bothered for it. You may take it off and air fry it if you prefer. It's totally up to you. And then just kind of allow it to sink in a little bit. And then it's ready for cooking in the slow cooker. Then you want to be getting your lid on and aiming for three hours on high before you check on it or six and a half hours on low. Our slow cooker has done just about three hours now and I can smell the pork and the apple and it smells amazing. 
So now what I recommend you do is once you think that it's about cooked is to do the fork test on some vegetables uh, like I'm doing there. Apologies if there's a lot of steam there. And what's going to happen is the ones that are more soggy, the smaller ones are going to be better for adding to your sauce. And the ones that are more firm like that on a fork can be served alongside your pork. So now your next job is to grab your pork. I find the best option is to use a fork like I'm doing here and then just placing it on a chopping board because now you want the pork to rest for a little while before you make the gravy and you want the vegetables and things to cool down as well. So I'm just going to put it to one side for about 20 minutes to do that. So we've allowed the pork to rest for a bit, uh, which is what I prefer to do anyway because it makes it so easier for when you're handling it with your hands and you don't want to burn yourself. So first of all, you want to remove the string with a knife. And then, now the string's gone. I know, I'm going to get trolled to death for this, but I can't stand crackly. So, and I'm on uh, Slimming World, so I can't really eat it anyway unless I want to lose all my uh, sins to chocolate, uh, from chocolate. Uh, so what I recommend you do is you can get in there and you can remove it yourself. And then of course, I'll just get rid of it, but you can air fry this if you want pork crackling with your pork leg joint. And this is another reason why to wait until it's, until it's cool because you don't want it too hot that it's uh, too much an effort to grab like this. So. That leaves you uh, with your main bit of pork that you've got left over. And then of course, I'm really not keen on those bits. I think it's my biggest fussiness is fatty bits. So then, just gonna slice through it. And then you can see what it looks like. And then you can see that that pork is absolutely perfectly cooked. And then, You can slice some up for your dinner. I should tell you the worst thing about pork, and the same can be said sometimes to certain cuts of beef, it shrinks so much when it cooks. So if you look how little we've actually got here once you've lost the crackling. So then, oh, sorry about that noise. So then you want your pork onto your dinner plate and then we can start putting the dinner plate together. So first of all, move your pork out of the way. And then what I'm actually looking for is the firmer bits of vegetables and things in here and to reduce any of the liquid going onto the plate because then you can have some lovely vegetables and obviously your potatoes and apples to serve directly on your dinner plate. So again, then bits are lovely. And again, another batch. And there you have it. So if you're like me, and you love a lot of vegetable, you can fill half of your dinner plate uh, with the vegetables and the apples and things. So now, all that's left really is to make your yummy gravy. So we're now gonna swap the slow cooker for the blender. So the next step is we want the liquid from the slow cooker. So you just want to pour your slow cooker content into your sieve. And then, Drain it, give it a shake. And now you've got your vegetables separated from your liquid. So now, making sure your blender's on, um, you want to be adding some of this liquid to the um, soup maker or blender or whatever it is you have. Not all of it, just a bit if you look at how much is left in there now. And then you want to add back in some of these veggies. You're especially feeling for the mushy ones. 
because they're easier to blend. And then once you've done that, oops, we lost one there. Once you've done that, I also recommend grabbing a bit of the pork. Not a lot because obviously it shrinks and you don't get much, but just enough to add some extra flavour to your blender. And then once you've done that, time to put the lid on. Note that we will adjust that, you know, if it's too thick, we'll add in some extra liquid and so forth. So then now you're looking for the blend setting. And once you've hit the blend setting, go for low. And then stop it when you can tell that it's blended enough. And then you can kind of take a look at it and there you go you've got a lovely pork gravy give it a taste test because you might want extra salt in it and things now that is absolutely spot on and um, what i love best is the taste of the apples that come through it's kind of like an apple sauce uh, meets like a creamy stock for the flavor of it and it's absolutely lovely and if you've got if you're ever cooking something in the slow cooker and you've got loads of extra vegetables that have gone mushy in the bottom of the slow cooker then you can do this exact same thing with those and then use it to make a gravy so let's find that plate again shall we and then of course pour it into your gravy boat and oh, let's just lose that bit there and then you've got your gravy to go with your pork roast and your vegetables. And then you simply pour it over. You look, it's a lovely thickish gravy. If you want it a bit thinner, what you can do is you can add some more of that liquid. But I recommend not adding all the liquid when you first start cooking because the problem you then have is that uh, you could have, oh, my sauce is too thin when you're wanting it thicker. So just do a little bit at a time until you get it done. Right, so now let's try the pork, shall we? Oh, can I just say, I absolutely love making gravies like this. You can do it with beef, you can do it with chicken, you can do it with turkey, it's just the best. Mm. And that pork leg joint is absolutely amazing. And it's wonderful how you can cook the vegetables at the same time. And that carrot is perfectly cooked as well. So just think of this as an easy thing that you can do next time you have a boneless pork leg joint. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the Recipe This family. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook and Pinterest. We also have a weekly newsletter at recipethis.com forward slash newsletter where we share with you our latest kitchen gadget recipes, what we're cooking in the mill in the kitchen and so much more. As well as this, we recommend that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and then whenever we have a new video, you will be the first to know. And if you want to know about all our future videos, then I recommend you hit the bell for instant notifications. But even better, we now have a podcast. It's called Magic with Gadgets. Simply search Magic with Gadgets on your favourite podcast player and you'll find us there. 